And uh, let me pass those out to everybody so they can get a close-up look at those. And um, that's partly at what's, what we do, why we do what we do here as we do a prophecy update that uh, what in the world's going on? Well, part of our reason that we come here and we do this every month is because there's three things that the Lord does not want us to be unaware of. And these are three things that we need to continually be seeking. And one of his, is his nation, is his working with the nation of Israel, Romans 11. He's not done with Israel. So as we watch Israel, we need to watch Israel because it's God's prophetic timepiece. Spiritual gifts, and we need the spiritual gifts. And God's not uh, taking us into any type of charismania or anything like that, but it's a supply and he wants to give us this supply to be able to do what he calls us to do so that we can do something about the world that we live in. And then here, why we come, his second coming, which means the last days, as we read in First Thessalonians chapter 4. So, Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for time to come and just enjoy uh, that you speak. We have a God who speaks. And as we studied this morning, we have a God who has so much more to say. You always got so much more to say. And I thank you, Lord, that you've given us a word and you've given us a hunger and thirst for it, that we want more of it. And so we dedicate this time to you that you would have a way with us and take us away and just get us ready, prepare us for the days that we live in like no other time, surely. And I pray this in your name. Amen. So... I surely, when I do Prophecy Update, it's, you know, it's not about information, it's transformation. That um, I don't want to be dramatic and theatrical, but this place, the word as we look at it, as we take the, the scriptures and the news, put them together, when we see all that, I mean, these are some crazy times. To watch what's going on in the Ukraine and the things that we're going to talk about, the volatility, that the days that we live in, uh, we do this so that we can have a peace. We know that as the scriptures tell, tell us, as we wait for his coming, First um, Thessalonians 4, that we can comfort one another. And I can say, and we can all agree, God's not taken by surprise. God is on the throne. He's ready for all these things. And so we can just have a peace that our God rules and reigns. And it helps us set our priority. What's important? It helps us in this place. I'm going to see the King of Kings. And when, when I see him, I want to be adorned in white. I want to be clothed that when he comes, I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And it's proof as we read this, as we look at the news clippings and line them the scriptures, that this book, this book is written outside of our time domain. Only a God could say these things and see them come in the past. And that's why we need to preach the good news and give anyone an invitation. And so I open with, I have 14 points, which we hope for anyone, we hope at the end of today that the technology is going to work for us. We'll test it. Uh, that all these slides will then be uploaded to the website and so when you've wanted to just go through the slides again or read the news clippings or else listen to it, that these slides will be embedded with that, that you can pull down the slides and you can share. We, we think we got it. We won't know until we finally uh, do an upload test after this is over today. Well, our first point, we look at Israel, Jerusalem, the Middle East. It's after the rapture, all eyes be, are focused on Israel. Well, it's pretty much all eyes are starting to focus on Israel. And so I got to just say then, if everybody's really looking at Israel, then how close then must our rapture, the God taking us away? Israel, the prophetic timepiece. Three things we look at and we put together. One, nation shall be born in a day. And secondly, Ezekiel 36, the regathering of the Jewish people from the four corners of the world in the last days. And then that Israel will be a cup of trembling for the whole world in Zechariah 12. And even though everything that's going on in the Ukraine will still come today and see Israel still a cup of trembling. 
and that we can't and won't take our eyes off what's going on in Ukraine and miss what God's doing in Israel because it's so prophetic. Well, May 14th, 1948, the only nation, 2,000 years without a homeland, born in a day, just as God said it would be. And there's Israel, an uh, established nation, a recognized nation before our very eyes in our days that we live. And God says, Ezekiel 36, that he's going to be in the last days. He's going to be gathering from the four corners of the earth. Israel's on an increase of people returning to Israel, Jewish people specifically, and this war is part of helping flow that in as we see thousands of Ukrainians are immigrating to Israel, Jewish uh, people coming. So right before our very eyes, coronavirus didn't stop it, it increased it, and uh, immigration to Israel surged in 2021 by 30%. Just as God says, all the pictures pointing to the gathering of the four corners of the earth. Well, the third point as we look at Israel, a cup of trembling. This week, serious cup of trembling that we've seen. And so you talk about the hypocrisy of it all. So Jerusalem this week, daily, literally, uh, this clipping here from this week, over 150 heard in clashes at El Aqsa Mosque compound. Uh, it's what the compound we call, it's the Temple Mount. Uh, we, as we look at it, we call the Dome of the Rock. That's not the El Aqsa Mosque. And there's almost, the media uses El Aqsa Mosque because they want to diverge from it, that it's the Temple Mount. It's where the temple of God sat, and as we get there, it's the, where the temple will be rebuilt as we talk about that. But the media constantly plays these word games, and uh, they call it the El Aqsa Mosque Compound. There's a little mosque there. It's tiny. In fact, when we were there, I didn't even point it out and say that tiny, that's El Aqsa. We just went and, and looked at the Dome of the Rock. Well, it's Muslim holiday, Ramadan, they go up for prayer to the mosque, the, uh, the Dome of the Rock there, the third most holy site that the Islam religion calls. And uh, the media doesn't represent it clearly, but um, people are showing up uh, for prayer with rocks with Maltev cocktails and with firecrackers. And they get up there, they're firing them at the um, Temple Mount police, the Jewish police, and it starts this unrest. And so Israel gets painted as the bad guys because they go and they're, they are enforcing the Temple Mount for the security and the safety. And so they go deal with the rioters. But of course, they get painted as that they were the aggressors. Um, if you came in here with Maltov cocktails and firecrackers and rocks for Sunday service, um, that would be a problem. And so we would just go, that is so ridiculous that why doesn't anybody just look? Well, it's a cup of trembling. Here's the hypocrisy, though. Vladimir Putin calls the Palestinian leader Abbas um, and criticizes Israel's policies at the mosque and criticizes how they handle the rioters and the Maltov cocktails and the fireworks. And here's a guy who's going into the Ukraine and killing the numbers are not even countable because of the misrepresentation, but you can be sure it's now into the tens of thousands. And yet, there they are, the smiling faces as they would there, that they're, you know, this is wrong, what's happened. Israel, a cup of trembling. Um, so Abbas, the, the, he's the head of the Palestinian Authority uh, there. His advisor says that, who advises him, that the Jews have no connection to the Holy Land. And that's what the battle is constantly going to be about, the Holy Land. That's why the, the dividing of Jerusalem. And here's the point that I always want to make is, why Israel, why Jerusalem, why the Temple Mount will always be this, this place of tension because the devil doesn't want anybody to remember what happened 2,000 years ago on a hill 
outside of Jerusalem. And that's why he wants to erase the memory of Israel. He wants to erase any ownership or any ties to the land so that he can disconnect and, and wipe out anything to do with Jesus Christ, him crucified for the sins of man, the Lamb of God who became um, sin for us. So they're building these tunnels uh, for terrorist attacks. So we'll keep an eye on that, but a constant attacking on the nation of Israel. So this week, just I keep building the delusion and so that we can see it and not be, you know, clouded by it. Russia invades the Ukraine. Unprovoked. Absolutely no proof that uh, we, we know that Ukraine doesn't have nukes because in 1993, President Clinton, the United States, went and convinced the Ukraine to give up their nuclear arsenal so that there would be peace in the region. Well, no nukes means easy, no fear as Putin comes and wants to take Ukraine. And we'll talk about why as we um, look into more of this, as we dig through this um, today. But Vladimir Putin invades Ukraine, demolishes, I mean, it's just refugee crisis now, five million plus and counting. And the United Nations Human Rights Council this week levies four anti-Israel resolutions because of what's happening with rock throwing and Molotov cocktails and all the while they levy one five million people sent into you know refugee status they only level one anti-Russian resolution against them so you can see the delusion that's coming and Russia invades and murders and yet the United Nation the this place that they uh, come, it's, we'll see the world continually this coming against Israel. I'm going to be building something here for us today, and it's just that, hey, we, you know, we need to realize the times that we are, and we need to realize the days that we live. We have front after front after front, like no time in the last decade or two, of this possibility, and I'm not being theatric or dramatic, I do never want to do a prophecy update to, to do fear mongering, this and that. But we got these nuclear possibility and options coming from all corners at this point. So we got Russia with nuclear possibility there in the Ukraine. And if that goes any further outside the NATO borders, then you almost have this nuclear possibility with NATO, which the United States part of. Then we have Iran on the fast increase to build up a nuclear arsenal. Iran says preliminary deal reached to release funds frozen abroad. You need a lot of money to build a nuke. So President Trump made a uh, sanctions against Iran for their progressive and aggressive nuclear program because Iran has made the point they want to destroy Israel. The current presidency and the current administration, they say, if you will lay down your nuclear ambitions we're going to release these sanctions we're talking this article here tens of billions of dollars of iranian money would be set free tens of billions of dollars 46 retired generals and admirals urns urge the white house do not do this do not enter any nuclear negotiation do not relieve them of anything and do not open up this floodgate of money that they may have so that they can build these 46 retired general and admirals i think they got a lot of experience i think there's a lot of war college there that there's some wisdom that's speaking do not do this i've taught it before the message is out online um they call them Islamic extremist. They also call Christian extremist. You know, the people that they say they're Christian extremists because they believe in the Bible. We are fundamentalist because we believe that the Bible is the word of God. And when God says what he says and tells us to do what we do, we do it because we fundamentally believe that this is the word of God. 
And if you've been deluded and deceived that the Quran is the literal inspired word of God, and it says to kill Jew, it says to kill um, the Gentile, then fundamentally you will do what you believe the Holy Scriptures tell you to do. You cannot, you could not ever negotiate with me to lay down and deviate from any fundamental principle of the Christian faith. You'll never convince me that tithing's not scripture. You'll never convince me of not to be a drunkard. You'll never convince me of being holy and set apart for God. No matter what you would offer me, you'll never convince me against the sanctity of life. You will never convince the Islamic fundamentalist to lay down and stop what they're doing. Even their Quran says you can make a peace treaty if it's all for the purpose of deceiving so that you can get what you want to do what needs to be done. They say in their holy scripture you can make these, you can lie about these agreements so that you can get what you want. But the United States, here we are, possibly releasing ten, tens of billions of dollars Here's how it all starts playing together, and I'm going to be tying it all together. So just so we see this big picture, Russia, big supplier of oil, goes into Ukraine, disruption. We're going to put a sanction on Israel, or I mean, um, Russia goes into Ukraine, and then the impact of oil that was coming in the United States. United States president says, we're going to put sanctions. We're not going to allow Russian oil into America. So guess where we're going to get oil? Iran. Let's give them more money so that they can what? Destroy Israel. This is what they're bent. This is what they're... Israel says Iran has nearly enough uranium for a bomb as talks remain. Jerusalem Post. I said we see a possible verge. In fact, I think it was reported that Putin was walking uh, around with the nuclear code case just to make a point. I can push these codes at any time I want. There's a place of, you know, full out nukes and there's what they call tactical nukes. I can send a tactical nuke that can pinpoint and take out just say Baltimore. I don't have to send a nuke that's going to take out the eastern seaboard, right? Possible brink nuclear exchange changes the whole world in the Ukraine uh, with Russia and here Israel. Iran, you get nukes, you're going to get nukes, and you're bent on destroying us. What's our option? Because what we're definitely going to find, the United States isn't going to be there. The United States proved it, middle, pulling out of Afghanistan. The message was clear. We're not going to be defending the uh, weak and the innocent. And then this is uh, last month, but Zelensky laments Ukraine left alone to face Russia invasion. Even with all the equipment that we send, which we have no idea where it goes. And I take you back to the foolishness of Afghanistan. There was like 100,000, um, you know, stinger type missiles that were unaccounted for when we pulled out of Afghanistan, when it was the war that would lead, you know, that we saw back in the Afghani uh, war back in the 90s. Where all that stuff is, we still don't know. And yet we just keep sending it in. And this is what's, what we have here. But nonetheless, you can send all the nukes. Or, I mean, you can send all the equipment you want. But there's still a place that Israel will know. I'm standing alone. Because I'm watching America. I'm watching what the NATO allies are doing against the bully that's coming. And again, I, I need to say this. And I say it every month. I know I don't have enough intel on should we and how should we be involved in the Ukraine. So I'm definitely not saying that we as America should be there fighting Russia. I think there's way more intelligence that's being communicated that I hope decision makers are making wise decisions. But what I do know of, here's what's being said. The United States says to Israel, Iran will never acquire nuclear weapons. But then again... Here's Zelensky, here's Afghanistan, and here they are standing alone. And here's the current uh, prime minister of Israel, Bennett. Only Iran deal acceptable to Israel is no nuclear weapon program. He's making the statement, if they get any access to nuclear weapons, then we'll do what needs to be done. And they've come to the place that they say, 
and we'll do it alone. So here's two places that we could see the world going into a nuclear scenario just like that. Well, then we look at, and it was almost like we would just say this, the second point, European superstate, the Antichrist, the man of uh, power is going to rise out of the European superstate and the seven-year peace pact. And that's uh, Revelation 13, Daniel 7, Daniel chapter 9, as we look at those things. The revived Roman Empire is the European Union that we look at. And we continually would hit that slide and go, look, it's before our very eyes. And then we would kind of move on. But here we are. It's now the front and center. The revived Roman Empire is the European Union. And very much the European Union is NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. America's part of it, but America doesn't have to be and is not part of the revived Roman Empire. But as you look at this, those are all the blue or the NATO and then the yellow or non-NATO, that's why you see Ukraine there and um, its impact there. And then Russia there on the right. And so all of a sudden, the revived Roman Empire becomes center stage and all these type of things. I showed you, and, and as you can see on my slide, what NATO is. Well, Finland and Sweden are not part of NATO. Based on Russians' aggression, just like Ukraine, we want to become part of this treaty alliance so that we and the treaty alliance article 5 in nato says if any nato nation gets attacked by anybody all the other nato's nations come to do battle so no one stands alone this came out of world war ii with hitler and the likes well finland and sweden they want to join because they feel that standing alone is standing alone and it's a slide somewhere down the line that i'll, I'll show you but here's what Russia said. Finland, Sweden, the minute you join NATO, we're moving nukes right up to your border. That's what Putin is telling. You join, we're moving nukes right to your border. So again, the threat of nukes and the volatility. Well, during this time, Israel, cup of trembling, European revived Roman Empire, revived, man of peace going to come out and try to broker peace between Israel and the world because it's a cup of trembling, looking for a world leader to come out. Well, during this time, earthquakes, famines, pestilence, and wars going to increase, Matthew 24. Well, here's how it all affects us, and it all affects us. Speaking of famines, in the sense, inflation up 8.5% from a year ago. Everything you're buying is almost 8.5% more expensive. It's a 40-year high. Wholesale prices surged by record 11%. And what that means is anything and everything. And as it's been reported, there's just ship after ship after ship after ship sitting off the coast of China where we're continually bringing our stuff in. A lot of it's good stuff, needful stuff. It's probably... 50% of this sanctuary is filled with chairs from China and stands and iPads and the likes. Well, ship after ship after ship can't get into the port because China's back on a lockdown because of a pestilence called COVID. And now this surging of inflation for you and I is going to continue more and more and more. What's the point that I'm going to make is in the next slide our next topic i should say point four is going to be a one world government and we're going to find that governments are more than willing to compromise and then unite and etc if it means trying to ease the financial strain because financial strain will determine who rises the power if inflation keeps rising and these things, and so here's an analyst, Ukraine war is a perfect storm threatening food, energy, and debt crisis across the globe. We're watching how this all plays together, even to a little place in, in uh, Anne Arundel County that we are. Ukraine war, World Bank warns of human catastrophe. 30% of the wheat comes out of the Ukraine and Russia, and ain't none of them coming during this war. Global rice price production set to plunge 10%, threatening half of humanity. Global food crisis. Russian forces actively bombing and destroying wheat stocks in Ukraine as crisis mount. There's going to be this, this diminishing of food, and we can see how quickly revelation can come to life where uh, a day's wage for a loaf of bread 
and these type of things. We're watching everything that you used to buy. If you didn't get a 10% raise last year, you're losing money, right? And I don't think anybody got 10% raise. Ukraine wheat harvest, which feeds the world, can't leave the country. Food prices up 37% middle income nations in crosshair. This is the World Food Bank. Why the battle for Maripol steel mill matters. What that is, is it's the, it's the city at the bottom by Crimea. And the whole point that's being made here is Russia's building this land bridge from Russia down to the Crimea that they took here to Maripol. And they're going to lock that whole thing up. And then once again, it will be shutting down the global supply as things move freely. Russia's going to have a lock on that. Here's our, uh, here's our financial um, representative here for the United States, Ms. Yellen. Russian-Ukraine war is reshaping global economy. This is before our very eyes. We're watching a one-world government with a one-world financial. Everybody's finances are being tied together. And here comes some hypocrisy. Germany faces a $240 billion hit if Russian gas is cut off. You know how it was a big cry, America stopped buying Russian oil? Germany and other nations are still taking oil from Russia. Germany can't cut it off because they're facing a $240 billion hit. Their inflation would like go into 40s, 50% if this would happen. The debt crisis, uh, the energy crisis, and the impact. So they keep buying Russian oil. Russia keeps taking money, and then they keep reinforcing military and going into the Ukraine to kill, steal, and destroy. Hungary gets another delivery of PAX fuel from Russia by air. So Hungary, a NATO nation, has nuclear power plants. Everybody wants to go green, go nuclear, get off fossil fuel. Well, here's Russia delivers the nuclear rods for the power plant. And so they flew around the Ukrainian airspace, and they flew and landed in Hungary and delivered the nuclear fuel rods to Hungary to fuel their power plant. More money for Russia. It's all tied together, but here's what we see is, once again, the point being made is, we thought, no, we didn't, not here. We knew, but hey, let's put sanctions on oil and then they remember that whole financial trade, put sanctions on Russia and try to hit them hard. Ain't nothing, none of that happened. Russia ain't hurting. We're probably hurting more than they are. And I know they're hurting though, but Russian imports have plunged on the back of, on the back of the Ukraine war, but revenue from its oil and gas exports have been more than made up. Look at Putin. I mean, just his face says it all. He knew this was coming. He knew it. He planned it. He was a step ahead of everybody. Russian expects $9.6 billion windfall from high oil prices. So he goes to war against the Ukraine. The whole world goes into this inflation and this debt. Oil prices skyrocket. He keeps delivering oil to Europe and the rest of the world. China's lining up. India's lining up for his oil. He's making more money off this war than before the war to keep building his war machine. Europe buys $38 billion in Russian energy since invasion. 30% of the gas comes via pipeline in Ukraine. The European Union, NATO... They're not shutting down their supply. Only we are. And so the oil just keeps flowing in. Putin has no fear of stopping because the money just keeps flowing. A growing amount of Russian oil is being sent destinations unknown. So there's just some nations who say, I'm not even going to say that I'm taking this Russian oil. But they are. Earthquakes. Russia warns, so back to NATO, Finland and Sweden. Russia warns, speaking of wars, that it will deploy nukes near Finland and Sweden if they join NATO. CIA director, U.S. can't take lightly possibility of Russian using nuclear weapons. This week, 
Russia test fires its new Son of Satan intercontinental ballistic missile to threaten the West during its Ukraine. Son of Satan, I think they have a bomb, a nuke called uh, Satan or something. And if it was to detonate, they don't have a delivery means, just so you know, right now. They don't have a delivery means to get it and detonate it. But if you were to drop it in between um, Baltimore and Washington, D.C., it would take out Baltimore and Washington, D.C., and everything in between. That's the power of that nuke that they have. The brink of nukes and the about. But here's a war that never ends. And it's one we can't miss. Worldwide, 42.3 million babies will be aborted this year. That's 115,000 before this day is over. Before this prophecy update, 4,800 babies will be aborted. And here's Planned Parenthood promotes abortion rights using a children's ice cream truck. We're going to talk a little bit about the grooming. But if you got that card, and there's hundreds up here, um, that's a 3D uh, image, uh, uh, artistic, what a child looks like in the womb at 11 weeks. And the reason of the umbilical cord is to make the point that's attached to human life. And that's why we come and we continually pray for the sanctity of life. Uh, we see war in Ukraine and we see the, you know, the depravity of man, but we still come and say, Lord, this is the greatest war. More babies are killed in the world through abortion. More people die through abortion than through wars. And so that's what these, these um, you can take them just to pray over them, but they're also great for sharing the gospel as you look on that in the back. And there's hundreds there. Take, it, take it what you want. The only stipulation we put, whatever you take, you got to give out. So then, this one world government that I'm talking about, and this one world religion, and this false religion, Revelation 13, Revelation 17, there comes the day that all the worlds, there's going to be this one world government, and then a one world religion kind of comes out of it, and then a false prophet comes and points to this Antichrist saying he's God halfway through, and so here we go. The world just united in such a way as we continually keep talking about this COVID-19. I hate to say it, folks, but it's, so far, it's not over. I hate to say it. And as I always say, this administration will have some pandemic, whatever the pandemic is, whether it's going to be war, whether it's going to be inflation, but if need be, we'll bring this COVID thing back up. But... Just in, U.S. court reinstates Biden's COVID-19 vaccine, vaccine mandate for all federal employees. Here's his spokesman there at the White House, Pasaki. Mass mandate legal fight helps CDC authority. They want to keep this mask mandate because it keeps giving authority to the um, center of disease. And as long as the center of disease has authority, then they can push it back that the government has some type of control. Biden to, we we're going to keep an eye on this, that says Biden to reinstate a rule. This is what President Trump tore down. Uh, the doctors must perform abortion, sex reassignment against their faith. So any health care provider or whatever, they'll be saying, they'll be, if you don't, you'll be up for legal ramifications if you don't do a sex change assignment or if you don't perform this abortion. It's a government control to make people do what the government wants to do. And of course, it's not going to be in accordance with the word of God. So speaking of a one world religion, we keep an eye on this because it's coming and it's being built right now in the U United Arab Emirates. It's, it's going to be a mosque, a synagogue, and a church all in the same location. Sometimes they call it Chrislam. It's interfaith. And the leader of the largest religion organization in the world, 1.2 billion Catholics, Pope Francis is promoting this this unity. Uh, the Abrahamic family house is what they're calling it. And this is a pope. If you see, this article's true. He urges Christians to never proselytize. Don't share that Jesus Christ is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. In accordance with John 14, 6, he says, do it through your life, do it through your witness. But the fact is, this one world religion that will come, it's not going to be religionless the one world religion, it will be Christless. So all, everybody can believe what they want to believe as long as you don't say it's emphatically Jesus Christ and him only. So the Pope, 1.2 billion, billion, 
billion, not million, billion. Uh, he was doing this uh, this couple of weeks, uh, April 5th. He's meeting with a bunch of uh, Muslim migrants. And um, he took his cross off because he didn't want the cross to offend the Muslims. It won't be religionless. It'll just be Christless. The cross will be removed. And uh, new Chinese law bans the word Christ on social media because they say it caused incitement. And I circle this, though, because, you know, Satan, he ain't winning. And all this ain't gloom and doom. Uh, the Christian radio continues to broadcast the gospel to the Ukraine despite being forced out. The radio waves are still sending the word of God over. You know, we actually, on Saturday nights, we actually send one of our teachings from here over shortwave radio. And it goes, and I go like this because it's going uh, around the, um, the curve of the earth. And it's actually landing in places like the Ukraine and Russia and Italy and the Middle East. So we don't know what God's doing with it, but we're doing something about it. We're pushing and uh, we're pushing the word as far as we can take it and uh, sending it in there. Well, this radio station isn't being shut down. Well, iniquity and sin will abound in these last days, as we know, 2 Timothy 3, Matthew 24, Luke 19. And here's some of the things. And everybody has to make their own decision, but I hope I can influence your decision. If you got Disney Channel, all they want to do is pump vomit into your house. Disney exec vows more gay characters amid huge inclusivity. Disney's obsession with grooming children is nothing new, but their openness about it is. Disney to run PSA from GLAAD, that's the new name for the um, gay uh, organization, Featuring family with trans. Disney Air comes out publicly as transgender condemns anti-LGBTQ bill. Biden administration endorses child sex changes on Transgender Visibility Day. U.S. to issue gender-neutral X passport. It's almost delusional that the United States could find itself in a place to say... That it's not male or female, it's whatever you want to put. If you don't want to be male or female on your passport, you can say, well, that ain't good. It's delusion. So there's a grooming that continually happens. It's happening with our Disney. It's happening with our Nickelodeon. And it's trying to get this generation to just think it's normal. And I think that's what we're finding here in all my prophecy update um, that we're going over today and um, that we look at. The whole point of it right now is commonality. War has become a spectator sport. War. Let's go see what the score of the Oriole game is. And while I'm there, I'll go see what's going on in the war. And we flick and we look and we can flip back between a sports, sports uh, channel and a war channel, CNN channel, and see. Well, that's the same with this gender thing and this gay thing. It's just a continual make it common and wear it down. Washington Post writes an article and they refer to a pregnant person rather than a woman. They won't call the person a woman. Now they want to use Canada. Who gets to decide this? It's talking of iniquity. Canada will soon offer doctor-assisted death to the mentally ill so if you're mentally ill, who gets to determine that you're mentally ill? This is murder. Doc Canada will soon offer doctor-assisted death to the mentally ill. How does anybody know? Who would, sign, who would come and say, I'm mentally ill, uh, I want to be put to death? And, and no, it's somewhere in the government that's going to come. The, the mentally ill, let's not deal with them and their threat. Let's just doctor-assisted kill them. It's murder. Then there's a scientific meltdown over the controversial discover of biblical Sodom. They found the site and uh, they found this all these shards of 
you know, glass-like things, pottery. And they say, let me see, um, they said this couldn't happen by anything less than an explosion. This is on an archaeological dig down there by the Dead Sea, what people would go. That's pretty near where Sodom would be. The airburst was larger than the 1908 explosion there in Russia when they were testing their bomb. A meteor that exploded in midair detonated with 1,000 times more energy than Hiroshima atomic bomb. And we know what happened in Hiroshima. And so they're saying whatever happened here was beyond any human proportions. Well, we know it was Sodom and its destruction. So I'll just cruise through a couple more Apostasy, the great deception. Um, false prophets will arise. People will, you know, um, they'll say they're religious, but they won't. This is the man who just invaded and made five million refugees. This is the man who's sending uh, weapons in to destroy thousands of people, tens of thousands of people's lives. This is a man bent on killing at whatever the price. And there he is in his religious ceremony there uh, that they do in January, the Epiphany. He's before that cross and the water is supposedly filled with spiritual significance that you sprinkle yourself in and it's a spiritual uh, event that happens in your life. And we're just going to see that, that people in the name of God and religion thinking that they have, this is Vladimir Putin who's doing these things. When he was convincing after the few, first few days, he told the people who had lost loved ones, no greater love has he than to lay down his life for a friend. He quotes the Bible in a justification of his invasion, invasion of Ukraine to kill. We've had his picture up since, I don't know, 2000 five or something as the most dangerous man on the planet and he's proven it more and so knowledge shall increase just a couple quick bullets daniel 12 we know knowledge is going to increase we see it on our phones we pick up our phones the magog invasion ezekiel 38 my point eight it's going to be a time israel's relatively at peace Russia's going to come down with Iran, Libya, uh, the Sudan. Turkey's a key player here. And they're going to come down and invade Israel. And boy, we see some pieces coming together here. I always say this. I put some X on so you can really say That X is where I stood in uh, 2020, February. And I took a picture over to that compound that I'm pointing to. It's only 10 miles away. That's a Russian compound in Syria. And they're only 10 miles from Israel. And, but here we see Russia, Iran, Turkey, they're all together and they have a bent on the destruction. Hundreds of Syrian fighters sign up to fight alongside of Russia. Well, after this war is over, they go back to Syria and they'll be ready to launch wherever Putin tells them to go. And 10 miles, they ain't got far to go if Syrian fighters who are fighting with and for Russia want to invade Israel. Putin sends letter to Bennett, the prime minister of Israel, demanding the handover of the old city. This is just this week. The guy's fighting in Ukraine, and yet he's saying there's a Russian Orthodox church in Jerusalem that should be ours, and we want it. Sign it over to us. And we're seeing, now I see him at a cross. I see him demanding a church. You start seeing pictures of this uh, antichrist who's going to come and then one day say, I am the Christ. I'm not saying Putin is. He kind of doesn't fit it perfect. But we see the image of an antichrist coming with war. First he wanted to come with peace. Now he's coming with war. But then he's coming in this religious garb. And um, as EU, European Union, sees stopping Russian fuel imports, which they're not, Israel sees an opening for its natural gas. So we've been saying this, Biden shut this down, but Israel has all this natural gas to send up to Europe. But Biden stepped in and blocked it and, and all kinds, of, it's a long story about that. This keeps the pipeline of Russia to flow oil into the Europe. But what we see here is Russia or Israel now sits on all this huge natural gas. And there's something of value for Russia to come and take if they need more money, if this war doesn't keep going as well as they hope it will. Hamas, it's an anti-Israel hate group, thanks Moscow for denouncing Israel, calls on central Russian role in Jerusalem. So we see Russia, Russian envoy, will respond accordingly if Israel gives Ukraine defense gears. We're seeing pieces moving that Russia's saying, we'll come down and take care of you if in any way you're taking care of the Ukraine. 
boy, this is our day, Magog invasion, it could happen. Well, point nine, there's going to be a rebuilt temple that the Antichrist is going to go in and demand to be worshipped. Matthew 24, Daniel 9, the temple's being rebuilt. We see battles up there. Um, where's America as we sit here? I don't have a slide for America. I have no scripture that shows anything of America in there. And we're watching the great demise of America. Point 11, the mark of the beast. Revelation 13, uh, you're going to need a mark to buy and sell. And boy, we're looking at a loaf of bread for the price of a day's wage as we look at this. And uh, it's interesting, you know, we talk about the chip in the hand, you know, because I got a chip in my wallet and I got a chip on this phone right now that I can buy and sell. This is my backup plan. Um, if you want to buy Bitcoin, you can put it on your phone, right? So if you want to start trading in Bitcoin, you can have it on your phone and buy and trade without a wallet anymore. My wallet has a credit card. It has a chip in it. You can get this chip possibly that's coming that uh, I don't think I have the latest slide. It just came out. But there's a company that's working the chip that works with the phone or works with the digital wallet. But I find it interesting is the is the facial recognition and how fast this has come that the facial recognition, because we say it could be a chip on the hand or the forehead. Well, you see that with the facial recognition and a chip, man, it's the perfect tie, facial recognition with a chip to person identification. And um, here's a tech company this week that will implant a payment chip into your hand. Uh, we know the national vaccine passports out there and cryptocurrency could help government and businesses. So I always was saying that the cryptocurrency would be kind of, you know, it's not trackable. But now it's picking up the steam of this digital currency that if you ever buy a Bitcoin and put it on your phone, well, it's now trackable and the government can see where you're buying and selling. And so we see government control coming through the smart, whatever it would be. 12, Babylon, the world headquarters. Someday, Babylon will be the world headquarters financially again. And that's Revelation 14, Revelation 18. And we say, can't be so. I, as I say, Satan wants to finish what he started back there in Genesis 11 and Daniel 9. Well, it's our day that the tyrant has been taken out and Babylon is open for uh, open for business that someone could come. And then there's going to be a battle of Armageddon. The, the east is going to come, the battle of the forces of the Antichrist, Revelation 16, Revelation 19. The kings of the east are going to rise, Revelation 9, 16, and Daniel 11 as they come. And not only is it China that we're watching as the kings of the east, but India and Russia are now working together because India wants the fuel. Hey, America won't take it, we'll take it. Puts America in a tough place because we're allies with India. So we've been to India and we do missions there. It's uh, pretty interesting there. And then all this, as I keep talking, nuclear war, Ukraine, nuclear war, Israel. Well, here's Russia or here's North Korea, king of the east. They're doing missile tests to deploy nuclear powered warships in the region. So now we got the North Koreans with the nu nuclear capability that all say they want their destruction of America. But the good news, the good news is God gives us these words to bring us peace. He knows it. He sees it. He tells us, take comfort in it. But what's your priority? That's why we do this every month. I love the information. I love to share the information. But the ultimate goal with this information is, Ray, church, what's our priority? We're going to see our king purity. May he see us clothed in white. Lord, when you come, may I be blameless when you come. I don't want any shame before you. I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And this Bible that we go over and we look at these news articles, it's proof this book is written outside the time. There's nobody that could predict these things from a chip to a Magog invasion to a, to a nation to be born after 2,000 years without a homeland unless he is outside of this time. And therefore, that means he controls time. And that brings us to a place to preach. And so, Father, I bless you and I thank you for your word. And I just pray, Lord, that you would prepare us what's important for the days that we live. And when you come, may we be busy about the Father's business. 
One more month, Lord, we've seen how much closer we're getting to the soon return of the king. As you move all eyes and focus to Israel, Lord, we didn't miss that Israel's still a cup of trembling, even with the destruction in the Ukraine. We're not missing all the iniquity that's abounding. And Lord, we're not going to be caught off guard. We're going to continue to pray. And we're going to continue to prepare. We're going to continue to tell the world our king is coming. And that's the ultimate good news. The king has come. He's taken us out with the blood, covering us to deliver us. And Lord, there will be a day that you'll take us out and we'll be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. I don't know how much pain we go through and how much suffering we have to endure, but Lord, we'll be prepared whatever you choose for us because we know our God is good even in the midst of broken roads and hard times and wars rumors of wars and pestilence and famine. I pray this in your name. So, got nine, ten minutes left.